Good morning and welcome to you all to this service of morning prayer on Thursday the 19th of November. The weather looking somewhat better today, with a bit of sunshine out there. Perhaps one of those more cold and crisp autumn mornings that I enjoy was talking about. Today we remember Hilda who was abbess of Whitby. Hilda was born in the year 614 of the Royal House of Northumbria and was baptised in York at the age of 12 by Paulinus. Encouraged by Aidan of Lindisfarne, she became a religious at the age of 33. She established monasteries first at Hartlepool and two years later at Whitby. This house became a great centre of learning and was the meeting place for the important Synod of Whitby in the year 664, at which it was decided to adopt the Roman tradition in preference to Celtic customs. Although herself a Celt in religious formation, Hilda played a crucial role in, the, in reconciling others of that tradition to the decision of the Synod. She is also remembered as a great educator, exemplifying, exemplified in her nurturing of Cadman's gift of vernacular song. She died on the 17th of November in the year 680. So today remember and give thanks to the life and witness of Hilda. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A Song of Trust in God As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving, among those who kept holy day, why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Well, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 61. You are my refuge, O God, strong tower against the enemy. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, will hear my vows. You will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king, that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name, and day by day fulfil my vows. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. 
risen Christ, as you know the discipline of suffering and the victory that brings us salvation, so grant us your presence in our weakness and a place in your unending kingdom, now and for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So we continue hearing from the book of Daniel, today, chapter 9, verses 20 to the end. While I was speaking and was praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God on behalf of the holy mountain of my God, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen before in a vision, came to me in swift flight at the time of the evening sacrifice. He came and said to me, Daniel, I have now come out to give you wisdom and understanding. At the beginning of your supplications a word went out, and I have come to declare it, for you are greatly beloved. So consider the word and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are decreed for your people in your holy city to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and prophet, and to anoint a most holy place. Know therefore and understand, from the time the word went out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, until the time of an anointed prince, there shall be seven weeks, and for sixty-two weeks it shall be built again with streets and moat, but in a troubled time. After the sixty-two weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing, and the troops of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. He shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half a week, half of the week he shall make sacrifice and offering cease, and in their place shall be an abomination that desolates, until the decreed end is poured out upon the desolator. Here ends our first reading. Song of the New Creation I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord your Holy One, the Creator of Israel your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing, now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Our second reading, we continue to hear from the book of Revelation, chapter 12. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs, in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars in heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child, so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule on the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, so that she can be nourished for 1,260 days. A war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, 
and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. For they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. For woe to the earth and to the sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. So when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. For the woman was given the two wings of the great eagle, so that she could fly from the serpent into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for time and times and half a time. Then from his mouth the serpent poured water like a river after the woman, to sweep her away with the flood. For the earth came to the help of the woman. It opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from its mouth. Then the dragon was angry with the woman, and went off to make war on the rest of her children, those who keep the commandments of God and hold the testimony of Jesus. Then the dragon took his stand on the sand of the seashore. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David, who his holy prophets God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from, our, from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, so it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. So let us pray. So today we remember and give thanks for Hilda, Abbess of Whitby. We thank you for her teaching, for her inspiration. We thank you for her guidance upon the life of the church in her time, for the synod that she was a part of, and for all those synods over the years who have brought together people, who have shown a way forward, who have guided the church in the way of the Spirit. We pray for those who sit on General Synod today, will be preparing to meet next week to discuss various issues about the church. We thank you for their work, for their guidance, for their discussion. We pray for the leaders of our church today, the Archbishops of Canterbury and York, Justin Welby and Stephen Cottrell, for the leadership that they give. We pray for the bishops in our own diocese, Bishop Julian, Bishop Philip and Bishop Jill. We pray for our Archdeacons, Mark and David, and for the leadership that they provide on a more local level. We pray for the Church, for those who are struggling not being able to meet together in person for worship at this time. We give you thanks, Lord, that we're still able to make our prayers, that we are able to meet virtually online, that we can still come together for worship. 
as we look forward to the coming weeks, when we prepare to celebrate the birth of your Son Jesus into our world once again this Christmas time. So we pray and commit to you, Lord, our plans for our different services, for the different levels of planning that we have to undertake, due to the uncertainty we feel about what sort of services we can have. We pray for those people for whom we will still touch, whom we will still reveal Jesus to. Help us this Christmas time to focus on what is most important, the birth of your Son, your gift of love to the world. From our prayer intention today, we pray for the national government, the cabinet and civil servants, that they would make wise and compassionate decisions that protect the most vulnerable and build up our common life. Over these past few months, the government have had to make lots of different decisions. Some we have agreed with, some we haven't. Lord, we pray for them in all those difficult decisions that they have to make at this time. We pray for their negotiations on Brexit, their leadership over the coronavirus, and for all the many other things that they still have to do to keep our country running. We pray, Lord, that they would always have those who are most vulnerable, those who are most in need, the forefront of their mind, and that they would be representative of the people who've elected them, that they would work amongst their own communities as well as nationally. And so we pray for those who are vulnerable in our world and in our local societies, for those who are hungry and thirsty, for those who are homeless and refugees, for those who lack medicine and education, for those who have no shelter and are far from family and friends, for those who feel very isolated and lonely, for those who are unable to understand what is happening in our world at this time. Lord, we pray for all those who would help them. We pray for those charities, aid agencies and workers who tirelessly work to support those in need. We pray for our young people at this time, for their health and mental well-being. We pray for our nurseries, schools, colleges and universities. We pray for those who enjoy being with their friends and those who have to isolate and miss them. We pray for those who teach, for those who learn, for those who keep them safe. We continue to pray for our key workers, for all who go out to work to provide for our needs in shops, businesses and manufacturing. We pray for those who work from home, for those who undertake many different roles and responsibilities from their own homes in their work life and for the challenges and opportunities that brings. We pray for those whose businesses have closed at this time, for those who are not sure that they will reopen, for those who find themselves furloughed once again, and for all those who've lost their employment or whose jobs are under threat. Lord, in these anxious and difficult times, we pray that we would know your presence with us, and that you would give us peace of heart and mind. We continue to pray for our health service, for all the work it does in caring for those who are in any sort of need, for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, for the care and compassion that so many people give to others, for those who go beyond it being a job, but a way of life and vocation. So we pray for our local hospitals, for doctors, nurses and chaplains, and for all who work within their walls. We pray for those who work behind the scenes, who support them. We pray for our hospices, 
for our care homes and sheltered accommodation, for those who work out in the community providing help and care at home. We pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres for the advice that they give. Lord, we pray that you would give strength to them all today in their care of others. And so we pray for those that we know who are in need of your healing touch at this time. We pray for Lisa, David, Morris, Margaret, Mary, Jeff, Alan, George, Chris, Charlotte, Gillian, John, Jim, Elaine, Steve, Susan, Kath and her family, Joyce, Sister Catherine, Christine, Dave and Margaret. Lord, be with them this day. May they know your healing touch and be a strength to those who care for them. And so we pray for those who have died, especially for those who died this past night. We pray for those who have died recently, for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, and for those who mourn. Lord, wrap them up in your loving and compassionate arms today. Help them to know the joy of eternal life promised to each and every one of us, and where our loved ones now dwell in glory with you. Eternal God, who made the Abbess Hilda to shine like a jewel in our land, and through her holiness and leadership, bless your church with new life and unity. Help us like her to yearn for the gospel of Christ, and to reconcile those who are divided, through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ to us open the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me for the service of morning prayer today. I hope that you have a good day ahead of you, whatever this day may be bringing you. Um, we have a service of evening prayer at five o'clock if you're able to join us for that. But there are no live stream services tomorrow. After evening prayer this evening, we start again on Saturday morning. In the meantime, do stay safe, take care, look after yourselves, and you remain, as always, in my prayers.